Here we go. Um, I'm hearing myself through the stream, not the music. Is is that something I did? Mm -mm. Okay. Where'd Matt go? I'm just gonna check something, guys, musically. So don't not yet. Ah. Okay. Hey Matt, can you uh can you turn on the music and turn off our mics?
Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and welcome to a very special UA Live. Uh, we are, we're taking, a, we're taking a chance today, we're going to shoot out the new ATR-102 Luna extension against a real-life ATR-102 tape machine. Uh, and to do that, brought along our good friend Fab DuPont over in New York City. How you doing, Fab? Bananas, as always. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, thank you for being a willing guinea, guinea pig and uh, and going down this crazy path with us. This is a, uh, you know, th this is no small feat to shoot out, you know, a plug-in with the actual hardware and bring them as close together as possible. Absolutely, and um, I love it because this is the kind of stuff that you don't have time to do in general. I mean, as I don't, um, mm -hmm. and it's also not necessarily the best use of one's time, but once, <laughs> when, it's, it's pretty nerdy, you know? You don't want to yeah. let people know you do stuff like that. Um, <laughs> uh, but once you know, it's kind of like a good piece of information to have under your belt, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, you can project, as opposed to all this stuff you read, you can actually hear it. So for me, this is very interesting. I really dig it. Yeah, absolutely. And well, it's great. So, you know, we've got hundreds of people here watching along with us. Mm -hmm. uh, so for everybody that's watching at home, if you guys have got questions uh, about the machine or about the process, uh, feel free to type them in the chat. We'll try to jump on as many of those as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, we're gonna we're gonna save the best for last. We're gonna we'll, we gotta we gotta work our way into the to this AB. Uh, we can't just dive straight into uh, to the good part. So. Uh, let's uh, you know. Let's set the baseline here for everybody. What uh, for the music? What are we? What are we featuring here today? Okay, so I thought that the best kind of music to demonstrate the ATR would be uh, music that is at least reminiscent to music that was made when the ATR was you know used every day in studios all around the world. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I asked um, our good friends um, Illiterate Lights, who are a great band. Uh, if we could use the series that we shot with them on Pure Mix. So a few months back, uh, we went and shot a start to finish series with Vance, Pal, mm -hmm. and Illiterate Light in Nashville at Sputnik. And so we showed up with a bunch of cameras and we started from zero and we ended up with this song. Uh, and then you can watch that whole series on Pure Mix. Basically, you can see the genesis of the song. It's pretty awesome. Uh, awesome. I think it's like 10, 10 episodes or something like that. And it's mm -hmm. really every detail of the whole arc of the song. So I have the privilege of being able to use, well, we asked permission um, to, use, um, to use that amazing content. And it's a, it's a Vance Powell session. So, you know, yeah. it's badass. So it uh, sounds good. The, it sounds the raw good. tracks sound already amazing, right? They sound great. And they sound like they should for that kind of music, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, if I were producing a record like this, I would hire Vance to record that stuff instead of me because he records that stuff the way it should be recorded. I, yeah. I this is not my um, this is not my area of full expertise. Although it would be fun. Those guys are amazing. They're a two-piece band. Two That's piece the incredible band. part. Jeff, it sound, it <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Jeff and Jake and mm -hmm. um, the drummer is a stand-up drummer. He plays standing. And then yeah. uh, and then Jeff is Jake and then Jeff uh, plays guitar, sings and plays bass uh, at the same time. What, does he have four arms? How does he? But he uses his legs. Uh, ah. um, he has two of them, one on each mm -hmm. side, and one of them is used for standing, and one of them is used to play the bass. <laughs> um, and it's it's fun. It's amazing because it's actually not a hindrance. It's actually a plus. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they are set up, it actually makes the sound of music awesome. So oh, yeah. um, so they were kind enough to say yes for us to use this content, and Pure Mix said yes. Um, uh, to use this content. Um, there's a link. If you want to see the genesis of this song, uh, go, see, go see it at Pure Mix. It's pretty special. Um, yeah. So what I have here in my um, trusty um, Luna stack, let me explain to you what I've done, okay? okay. Uh, so I have just drag and dropped all this, the raw stems um, mm -hmm. and um, in color coded them for your um, aesthetic pleasure. Thank you, thank uh, so you. it's my pleasure. Uh, in Lu I usually in in my in my other life in Pro Tools, um, I I color code all my buses uh, gray because there's no music on them. But since Luna puts the the buses in green by default, I'm not gonna go fight the powers. So <laughs> everything that you see is green is a bus. Okay. In blue at the top are the drums, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's drum bus. Then there's a um, sub guitar, which is a weird little sound. 
Uh, then there's two bass tracks, bass and bass DI, going through a bus. Mm -hmm. uh, the verse guitar through a bus. The verse chorus through a bus. A lonely little chorus picking guitar. And then there's a solo guitar through a bus. All the vocals through the, the lead vocals through the Vox bus. And then the background vocals through the background vocal uh, group, which is really said bus. What's wrong mm -hmm. with me? Where's my <laughs> consistency here? Yeah. How uh, dare you? Come uh, on, Fab. I thought, I thought you were a professional at this. Fired. Uh, then there's a vocoder through a bus. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. And so my, um, and then a mix bus. Yep. And then for us to be able to do the comparison later when we grow up, uh, we are sending uh, the output of uh, the Luna mix bus mm -hmm. to a pair of outputs, Apollo outputs. Uh, I'm using Apollo 16X, um, and that's going through the ATR tape machine and then going back to through lines of mm -hmm. Apollo. Uh, 16x input one two that you can see on yeah. top here, right here at the top mm -hmm. on the right, and that we are listening to here on tape return. Gotcha. So so this way, what we're monitoring the entire time is the same signal path, and what we'll be able to do later on is just take that track out of input to be able to listen between a recorded tape playback of it and the live input without exactly. double processing. So uh, I will re-explain that again, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yep. but but that's the basic setup. So a full Luna session going through an aux called mm -hmm. mix bus, like I usually do. And that mix bus is sent out uh, to the analog world, yep. running through the tape machine and sent back in. Nice. Fair? OK. And then for, for the most of the time, the tape, ma the tape machine is on input. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're not hearing the tape sound. Uh, yeah. And then at one point, uh, we'll change that. Awesome. Uh, so the other thing I thought I'd do uh, is to truly demonstrate uh, you know, what the ATR plugin can do, is mm -hmm. I basically mix the whole song uh, without any plugins, meaning nice. there's no EQ, there's no compression. As you can see, the session is mostly empty. The only thing I did is I... Um, I added a deesser on the mm -hmm. on the vocoder because it's quite bright, and so a deesser, three deessers, and then mm -hmm. one echo and one reverb. Keep, um, it, keep it simple. That's it. So there are no plugins. So I did the whole thing with just the ATR. And the way I'd like that's... to start it is I'd like to start it with every and, and the Neve and the Neve. Mm -hmm. um, the way I'd like to start it is turn all the ATR off, mm -hmm. uh, and then let you discover the song. Yep. Then I'm going to turn the Neves on so you, you can memorize what that does. And then I'm going to go group by group and show you what I did with the ATR to shape the sound. Because um, and um, a lot of people say, oh, I like the sound of tape. And, and I'm like, well, OK, but what does that mean? Do you mm -hmm. like the sound of 250 GP9? Do you like the sound of an ATR machine? Do you like the sound of an A800 machine, or an A27? Uh, or an A80, or do you like 3M machines, MCIs? None of that stuff sounds the same. Do you like yeah. cassette? Cassette is a tape, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. so, so I thought it would be interesting to, to drive, um, to drive this, this, uh, this exploration of the new plugin with the idea that actually tape is more than just like a, a static effect. You can actually use it for many things. It's mm -hmm. in this ATR plugin, because it has so many options on it, uh, lets you really push further. That's why I attempted, and Vance is going to have to uh, forgive me for that, I attempted to mix his production uh, with absolutely no processing whatsoever except the tape. Yeah. So, um, so that's the idea, because, you know, why not? Um, well, and this is and this is kind of <laughs> cool thing. So, like the real world workflow, right? Is you know, if, if you were in an analog studio running this, you'd run these tracks back off of a studio tape machine mm -hmm. through a console, EQ, compression, inserts. You know, you do all that in a console, and then you would commit the output of your console to the ATR one hundred two, and Correct. then that would be what you send off to your mastering engineer. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's kind of the normal work case. The cool thing about the Luna extension, right, is that you can do this on a bus by bus basis. So Correct. you can actually integrate more tape machines than you would really want to do in the real world uh which i you know to be completely honest like i was like ah, are we gonna ever get, am i ever gonna want an atr like on a you know on a drum bus or on something else uh spoiler alert yeah it's it's actually really awesome to be able to have a little you know a touch of tape and you can also <coughs> you know like you're mentioning use it for creative purposes so 
you know, what you're going to be able to show us is like you can use this to shape the tone, to add a little, you know, subtle tape compression in a mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Uh, and kind of glue glue each subgroup together and then also glue the whole mix together at the end. Subtle or not, you know? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be pretty fierce. Um, yeah. And, and that's fun. Um, it's, it's very fun. Let me play you the song. So this is raw with nothing on, right? Awesome. As flat as possible. Oh, I also have a little, like, just because we don't want him to feel left out. I have a little mm -hmm. Studio 800, Studio 800 on on one of the raw tracks that's not going through a bus because, you know, I heard some complaints from Studer, uh, the Studer plugin saying, you know, if you do this, I will never work with you. You were again. hurting its feelings. Oh. Voila. So <laughs> so I have the Studer on one thing and I jacked it up. Oh, maybe I'll play that for you, but that's the detail. Otherwise, it's le raw, as we say nice. over there in Frogland. So, um, so the song uh, is called appropriately "Sweet Beast." Um, and um, so this is the raw takes by a, a little balanced, um, but with no processing whatsoever, no tape, no bus, no Neve, nothing. So this is what Vance captured. Then it repeats, it's pop music, it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's a cyclical thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, amazing, obviously, really great, beautiful, super vibey tracking job by, um, by Vance, as always. Um, uh, it, it's, it's awesome, I mean, it's, it makes life easy. Right. Um, so <laughs> it's, um, a, it's nice to be able to mix well-recorded tracks. Just kind of makes the whole thing go a lot yeah, smoother. Yeah, it's, it's mix, not fix. I like it. Yeah. Um, and it's joyfully messy. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's great. Mm -hmm. And you can really get that vibe on the on the series. It's like, we had so much fun for three days. Maybe a tiny bit too much fun. Um, <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the Neves on. Mm -hmm. All the Neves. Okay? So, okay. Uh, and then we're going to play a few bars of that so you can print that in your head. And then I'm going to go bus by bus. Cool. Uh, so this is the same exact stuff, touch nothing, just turn the Neve busing on. Summing, sorry, summing on. So it sounds great. You can hear what it does. It makes everything a little more record-like. It mm -hmm. softens the transients. The only thing a little tricky that I did here, I mean, I turned everything on default, as you can see. The only thing is I'm starving the mix bus for headroom a little bit here. Gotcha. That's just it. To kinda... I, just to make the so you soften transit a little further. I don't know. I just I just felt like I should do that. Um, and then also I'm starving the 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 Neve summing for transit for um, headroom on the bass also to just mm -hmm. make things go. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that's it. So I'm going to put this away. So now let's go to the drums. And let's start right, right at the top of the drums. Yeah, people are noticing the difference right away. Jerry is saying the Neve really opened up the drums and the vocal sound yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's the saturation it does. It's beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. it sounds lovely. It really sounds lovely. Um, and the fact that it's on the, you know, on the purely didactic educational side, because we're all students of everything, right? We're all trying to get better. Mm -hmm. um, at what we do, um, the fact that you have a, a, a reliable VU meter per bus. <laughs> very, um, very helpful. I mean, 
if you if you care to look at it, that is, <laughs> yeah, uh, is pretty nice. So this these are the drums with just the Neve and Raw. And then for the for the drums I chose after playing with it, you know, because this is fairly new, so I'm still learning it. Uh, mm -hmm. I played with a GP9 at 30 hips and one inch, because yeah. I was I was trying to get a lot of bottom uh, or to enhance the bottom. Since I'm not using any EQ, I decided I was going to use the um, the GP9 mm -hmm. uh, and 30 hips and one inch. Um, so the other thing I did. And that's the thing that's pretty cool um, about the plugin. And let me show you some, some tricks. Uh, when you, uh, this is the on off button. Uh, option clicking on it will turn the whole thing off, which is uh, all of them off, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, if you click up here, you get this, um, you know, the, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? The, call the, the, it's like the focus window. The explorer. The, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the window into the world of goodness. That's what it's <laughs> called. Yeah, that's his technical term. Uh, yeah. And then you have a lot more um, settings there. So you can change the speed, just like here. You can change it here, which is the actual display on, a, on an ATR. I'll show you a little bit later. And then mm -hmm. you can choose the calibration, which is how hard you hit the tape. Yep. The tape formulation, the calibration, and then the head stack. Quarter inch, half inch, um, and then one inch. Um, and so all that makes a difference in the sound. Yeah, and then if you want to get ultra ultra nerdy, you can click this, and then you can turn the noise on and off, mm -hmm. choose uh, auto calibration or um, you know alter it. I'll show you later, and then uh, NAB CCIR, and then you can change the bias, and then you can change the EQ. So yeah. this is a lot so of options. Is, it becomes your tone shaping tool, right? At this very point? much so, very much so. So um, we're going to keep it simple because we have a lot to see, but check it out. For example, if I listen to the drums, again, I'm going to play them raw, and then I'm going to play what, I'm, what I chose, OK? okay. Listen to the bass drum. Just focus on the bass drum. This is raw. Wait. Raw. You basically lose an octave, well, you gain an octave with the tape, which you yeah. lose when you remove the tape. I'll do it again. Listen to the impact of the bass drum, the blooming, the boom part of the bass drum. So without. With. It goes from going here to just blossoming, like having a chest and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, it just slams the transients in a way that's very beautiful. Um, I love that. Um, and so I could do, I could try different things. So for example, if I want to go, uh, I want, I could go quarter inch, uh, mm -hmm. a quarter inch stack with the same tape. Sounds completely different. Again, as a reference, sorry, this was one inch. Quarter. Where it gets really interesting is if you do go quarter inch and then you start changing tape formulations. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, we could go with a cassette. Here that's near drum, how aggressive it is. So it just became this like crazy lo-fi. Yeah. And it's awesome. And so for example, imagine you have a, a something that comes in and has um, all the vibe of a dead horse, say. Uh, what <laughs> mm -hmm. you could do is you could take it and slam it through this, and it gives you this buoyancy, this thing that's really cool. And then you can mm -hmm. play with all different types. And in real life, if you wanted to switch between 111 and 250, you would have to realign the record <laughs> heads. Uh, and then you know you could change uh, um, speed pretty quickly, uh, especially mm -hmm. on an ATR, because he has um, technology that actually lets you calibrate the machine for both speeds at the same time, 15 and 30. So my original choice was GP9 mm -hmm. uh, at 30 and one inch, because I like that was to me the fattest I could get. But I'm willing to listen to others. Let's listen to 250, which 250 at uh, 15 nips is my favorite uh, sound. Not as fat. 
That's all right. 468. That's bringing bottom, but not the bottom I like. GP9. I just like that roomy bottom that comes out. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's the thought process, right? Another thing I want to show you is this. The, uh, the plugin has the, because of the whole like um, master tape concept, right? Mm -hmm. um, it actually feels very different from using the ATR, existing ATR 102 plugin on a bus. Uh, it's hard to define, it just works. And again, the meter gives you um, gain staging ability and you mm -hmm. can do all this switching it's, it, and you, you can you know, mute them across everything. It's really nice. Uh, I didn't expect it to, to take to it so much, um, but it has a cool feature here called pre-fader. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can run the tape machine on this bus and you can run it pre-fader or post-fader. Which mm -hmm. means that if you run it pre-fader, the level of these faders here are all feeding that bus, right? Yep. So it's the level of those faders that decide how hard you hit the tape. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's great. Uh, because what you could do is say, if you want more saturation, you could select all the drums, you could hit the tape harder, and then mm -hmm. you could use the fader to, to just Bring level match. Mm -hmm. Or you feed everything post-fader, and then yep. the, the harder you push your fader, the harder it hits the tape machine. And both workflows have a, um, have a function. Yeah. For example, here, for the drums, I used Pre. I used Pre because I wanted to be able to jack my level up into the tape machine quite hard, mm -hmm. but, I, uh, but I, wa I didn't want to you know, blow off my mix bus. Does yeah. that make sense? So, mm -hmm. um, and since I'm not using any plugins to you know, temper the madness, I'm able to choose how hard I hit the tape, and I'm able to pad that post, which is pretty cool when you think yeah, about it. Yeah, totally. And that's, it. yeah, so for everyone, hopefully it's making sense here, when it's pre-fader, it literally, it's kind of where it is in that signal chain, right? So you're mm -hmm. going from the, the bus input, through the Neve, through the ATR, then through your inserts, finally to your fader. Yeah. But when you put it on post, it travels through everything, including the fader, and then hits the tape. Uh, mm -hmm. Which allows you, it's just, it, it, it gives you the finesse of how do you want to gain stage into the ATR 102. Uh, and having both those options, it, it's incredibly powerful. Yes. And that is for the whole master tape concept with that pre post function is key mm -hmm. uh, to being able to shape this whole thing. Like I was able to get this thing to sound like a, uh, a record by just playing with that. Um, so, so, you know, this, this was my option for the drums. So to, to summarize, you know, let's not think of tape as just like on off. Tape is actually a, an amazing tool to shape tones. It really is. Yeah. Uh, so if, say if I switch to bass uh, and I go to the chorus. And so for the bass, this is the raw bass. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is with what I did is um, I used actually on this one, I used a preset. Let me oh, show nice. you. When you click on, you know, when you select your, your master tape insert, it brings, mm -hmm. you know, the explorer of all great things on the left. Uh, and at the bottom of the explorer of all great things is a set of uh, presets. And I use the vintage sun baked cassette. So I'm literally going. Um, quarter inch head stack, 3.75 ips inch per second, which is very, very, very slow. Very slow. And then 35-90, which is like, you know, the kind of formulations they use on cassettes. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who were uh, born yesterday, cassettes were cool. They were the little things and you put them in a machine, <laughs> you could hear music. It's nice. Look up Walkman. All right. So um, uh, check this out. So this is without again. And this is with. Without. So listen to the edge, you know, the, the DI sounds like this. And then the amp sounds like this. The combo sounds like this. Now, what the take with the vintage um, baked, sun baked cassette, 
uh, sandbag, by the way, is when you had a car and they had a cassette player and you left the tape on the on the <laughs> wind, you know, like on the windshield. No, not windshield. The right there, you know. The dashboard, you, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you take Michael Jackson out and you put uh, Pet Shop Boys in, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, depending on who you are, and then um, and then you forget that tape there, and the sun bakes it, and then you put it back in, and it sounds all weird. Sounds like this. <laughs> it sounds like this. So what I like it that what it does is it basically softens that high end, but not like an EQ. It's really a dynamic kind of like messy thing. And then the mm -hmm. bottom is like becomes a little, to be technical, farty. Uh, check it out. Yeah. Hear how much fatter it gets, and so with and, the drums, and it, it changes the, like the nose of the bass. Exactly, it's really awesome, and it makes it have you know, eating a Girth. lot of French fries. All right, here we go. <laughs> I just love it, and for this, um, I used uh, I didn't use pre because it was hitting hard enough as it was, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't want to you know play with it that hard. Uh, let's check out the guitars. So if I go to the top of the song, uh, here, guitars tracked by Vance Powell. Okay, that sound great. And for this one, I chose the 250 at 50 nips, mm -hmm. which uh, is my favorite uh, since the first time I tried an ATR. Uh, and then quarter inch, and it sounds like this. Without. With. That little shine, that like uh -huh. that. Tss, tss, and you know, listen to the attack, chink, chink, that part, without. With. Now let me show you something else that's cool about this. So, um, you know when you use an 1176, when you, you bring the level in to get more mm -hmm. compression, then you have to bring the level down? Yep. Which is very hard to do with a mouse, right? Because uh -huh, the yeah. mouse only clicks on one thing at a time. Exactly. Uh, well, tape machines are the same because we've learned earlier uh, that you know, the harder you hit them, the more you change the sound. And sometimes it's highly desirable to be able to change the sound, uh, but you got to get in and get out. Like for example, no offense, my friends, but the the UA, um, good people, uh, Studio 800 plugin, which I use on every mix in the universe. Every time I want to saturate it, I got to bring the level down, mm -hmm. right? What the, you guys have done here is super awesome. Is if you click on your plugin. It opens the explorer of all great things on the left. And then you could change the ratio between how hard you hit the record head and, the, and how hard uh, it plays back. So basically, the plugin will automatically compensate for hitting it harder. So another way to super saturate is to go here, which is what I did on this track. I just pushed the hell out of the, the, the guitars into the plugin by just using this trick right here. So if you're happy with your gain stage mm -hmm. and you don't want to think too hard, you can just click on your plug and hit it hardest. For example, I could go back to the drums. I don't know if I did it on the drums. If I go back to the drums, yeah, for example, these are the drums. Mm -hmm. uh, it works better when I play, when the drums are playing. And then I can decide to just go crazy. And that's too hard, it's saturating, right? Uh, yeah. So I could find in between, between maybe, let's see. Somewhere like this. As opposed to default. In this case, the, probably the reason why I didn't do it and is because I like the way it sounds, not pushing it. But you get the vibe. The vibe is yeah. you can have your gain stage, you can have your mix really where you want it. And mm -hmm. then you say, ah, I need a little more grit. or uh, And then you could just go open that. Just push it a little bit, and uh, Luna, um, the the, um, the master tape plugin, will compensate for the input versus output level, which is very elegant. Thank you very it's much. Very nice. It's very majesties. nice. Yes, it is nice. Um, 
So, I mean, I did the same thing on the, on, I imagine I would do the same thing on the, um, on the guitar, uh, on the chorus guitar. Chorus guitar is a completely different vibe. Uh, where is it? Hi, gorgeous. Uh, there, and what up? <laughs> oh, Jeff Gorman. Gate crashing. There you go. So let's listen to the, to the chorus guitars. If I turn it off. With. Notice what I did here is I went really, really, really lean on how hard I hit the tape because I wanted more of a lush thing um, mm -hmm. on, on these chorus guitars. Awesome. And then the other chorus guitar is the picking guitar. I told you I'd use a, a lonely little Studio 800, just, you know, A for effort. Here we go. <laughs> uh, where is it? With. And here I'm jacking up the saturation all the way, and I can't wait till the plugin can do that where I just push it and it lets you saturate the plugin without having to deal with input and output. So this is just a footnote. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, technically, if I, uh, do the pull up the magic uh, part of the studer. So that saturation knob is actually, it's doing Yeah, the it's magic. doing that, but it's not doing mm -hmm. that in the plugin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, understand, understand. Well, and that's the, you bring up a good point. So the both the studer A800 and the ATR102, uh, we're showing them today uh, in their Luna extension form, but they still also exist as UAD plugins. Uh, and you know, there's there's subtle differences, especially for the ATR. Uh, it's actually big differences because the, you know the the UAD version of it uh, also has tape delay. It's got a few a few extra options, but most importantly, it's it's actually a very high latency plugin. And mm -hmm. part of I think what you're feeling here with the with the ATR 102, the Luna extension. So it took out a lot of that high delay stuff, and it's just it's actually a reduced latency from the UAD plugin while still retaining all of the, the the tape part of it of the of the emulation is still there. But by removing the delay tape delay aspects of it, uh, it's just way snappier feeling for you know when you're editing or doing automation. It's also it's also kind of it's part of the consciousness of the workflow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like you're not sitting here thinking, hmm. What am I going to use today? You know, you have this thing that you know works, is there and you can play with, and it's like paint. You, you can choose your color. It's really great. Yeah. Um, uh, it's really, really great. Um, so here's, um, here's the awesome guitar solo that they came well, up with. It, and I saw a couple of people asking questions you know, about how the hey. guitars were tracked. Um, you know, uh, so this is, Vance. Uh, this is the way Vance tracks, if I remember well. Um, because I've probably been in 150 recording sessions since, but I think mm -hmm. Vance used a BK5 ribbon uh, and a 57? No, mm -hmm. a 67, a 67, and a BK5. Um, okay. There is no denying that you know he's my favorite uh, person to track guitars um, and drums for this stuff is flawless. So that's what I've seen him do: a 67 and a BK5, if I remember well. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I could text him and ask him, uh, yeah. and uh, or you could go watch the Pure Mix uh, series. That I was like, I was like, there, there just so happens to be a video documentary of, of how the song was recorded. Every, every single step of yeah. it is on the documentary series that you probably have a link somewhere at the bottom of this thing. Yeah, um, it's in the video in the video description. There's a link to the Pure Mix page where you guys can uh, you can check out the whole behind the scenes of the song. Buy a lot of popcorn. It's like yeah. ele eleven hours of, of videos. <laughs> So it's like a lot of popcorn. Um, yeah. So the solo sounds like this, raw. So badass. Um, and so it felt to me that it was a little aggressive and bright for my personal metrosexual taste. So mm -hmm. um, I chose 456 at 7.5 ips. 
quarter inch. So that's pretty lo-fi and it sounds like this. So again, without. With. Here what it does, it's completely not in there. So I'm going to uh, change in between. But in the sauce, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like on its own, you may think. Well, if you listen without the tape on the on the guitar. And if I wanted to brighten it a little and you know not slam it so hard, I could go to say uh, 30 hips. Fifteen, but I stand by my choice. Uh, you can send hate mail to hate mail at me. Dot me. <laughs> so there's something that happens that I didn't, I did it, but I didn't talk about it. Is you can mm -hmm. have quick access to this trick I showed you. The how hard you hit the machine by hitting this extension here. You can extend the uh, mass tape extension right here and you can do the you know the adjustments right here as opposed to having to go to the explorer of great things on the left mm -hmm. um inspector that's what it's called i mean we call it technically it's called the focus pane focus pane i call it the explorer of great things um call it whatever so, you like <laughs> thanks i like that license um so um so and so on and so forth um you know uh, every every for every instrument i decided to um I just listened to all the different type form formulations, and that helped me, uh, uh, you know, appropriate the uh, the knowledge, like put in me the knowledge of what they sound like. On the vocals, I went all out, mm -hmm. and I went full on cassette. Um, I've I've been fascinated with the sound of cassettes lately. So this is the vocal raw. Master plan. I bet again. And this is with the cassette, and I'm pre, so I can hit it the way I want. Master plan. I bet again. It's distorting like crazy. Uh, and, but I like, uh, not martial distortion, but you know, it's saturating heavily. Uh, mm -hmm. and, well, it's, and it's also very dynamic too, right? So, like, some, word, yeah. some parts of the word will really reach into the saturation, and others just kind of get, uh, get the lift. Yeah, get slammed. So, check it out uh, without. Master plan, I bet again. With, ah, uh, sorry, with. Master plan, I bet again. In the context of La Song. Master plan, I bet again. My only worst enemy is my head. Cool, and then I did, uh, Background vocals, I did 250, 15 hips, quarter inch. Mm -hmm. There's a vocoder on the chorus, check this out. Uh, and the vocoder, I tried to fatten as much as possible. This is raw. Oh, and on the vocoder, I have a de -esser. Needs to be said. Yeah, important. <laughs> yes. And then with. And I jacked it up all the way. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to, I could come here, uh, make the insert pre-fader, uh, select those two guys, make sure that grouping is on, and hit it harder and compensate here. That's a bit much to my taste. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can kind of hear it. it almost feels like it's kind of starving yeah, a it's, little bit, right? Yeah, it's compressing. Mm -hmm. That's good enough for jazz. Let's see in the context. Beach, on a sweet leash, 
it's bringing too much attention to the vocoder for me, so I'm going to return it to where it was, but you get the vibe. Okay, great. So the other thing I did on this mix is I, uh, the only other thing I did on this mix besides the de -essers is I put a uh, slap delay on the vocal mm -hmm. and I used the EP34, boom, and a 250 for, um, for sauce. That's it. The rest of the mix is all ATR and balancing. So from the top of the song, it sounds like this. All right, that's great. So we are, we're playing a lot with the ATR extension. Now, the original ATR mm -hmm. is a two-track recorder, mostly used to put on a mix bus. Yeah. Um, so we should probably try and do that. Um, the, the, the final cherry on top, right? The cherry on top. So as if, if you remember well from the beginning of this, or if you just showed up, I'm going to remind you, um, all these tracks overall, and they are going through buses in green, and all the buses have ATRs on them. And uh, with different various tapes, formulation, head stacks, and speeds, and slamming and stuff. I didn't go like change the EQs and everything because we don't want, we, we want to be able to go to dinner and have champagne at one point. Uh, yeah. uh, there's a rabbit hole of epic proportions. Um, <laughs> not that I've, I won't do that for myself later, but. Um, so we have that. And now all that stuff is being summed through a mix bus. And on that mix bus, I have an ATR 102, this one. And this ATR 102 uh, is 250 at 30 ips. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, is, this should be half inch. Um, two uh, 250 at 30 ips on a half inch machine, which is mm -hmm. the classic, well, 30 at half inch is the classic ATR thing. Right? Yeah. So this is our mix, and I'm going to start with the drums right here. This is the mix we've been listening to with all the ATRs on all the buses, but nothing on the mix bus. And then I'll play it again with the 102 on the mix bus. Fair? Sounds good. Here we go. So raw. With Master Plan, I bet again. My worst enemy is my head. So much fatter. So play attention to the bottom of the drums, the bass drum, the blooming of the bass drum, and also the transit on the snare, how the snare hits. Um, and then on, a, on another pass, you could also check out, I'm going to do it a couple times. And you, on another pass, you could also check out the, the relationship of the vocals versus the snare. Uh, everything kind of gets, for lack of a better word, glued together. Uh, so I'm going to start again without. Let's do that again on the chorus. Check out the chorus, listen to the bass and everything. And I'm going to turn it on and off every two bars. Uh, chorus. It just falls in place. Um, you well, it's, could, it's, so, it's one of those things, right? When you kick it on, it, it's, it's a subtle difference. But then when you take it away, that's, that's when I yeah, feel it the most. It just falls apart. Um, and especially for that bass, 
Uh, I mean, you could also do this. This is terrifying. Uh, no, no ATRs. If you're wondering what those records sounded that way, and our records these days don't sound that way, it's because until recently we didn't have this. Um, mm -hmm. This is very practical. Um, so that's that's the overview of how I think about the the extension. Um, yeah. I like to think of it as paint, and I like to uh, run into it hard or not hard using this little thingy here, which is where mm -hmm. I spend the most time. Um, and it, the, the, a good way to do it, I mean, you could use the presets. Um, because somebody spent a lot of time making sure they sounded good. Uh, yeah. However, they are very level dependent. So my recommendation is to make sure that you look at the meter and mm -hmm. you teach yourself what the difference is when you hit it at zero, when you hit it at minus three, and when you hit it at plus three. And you really internalize that for every single tape stock. For example, you can't hit 250 as hard as you hit um, GP9. You know, mm -hmm. uh, It's all the tape. And it wasn't designed to do that. The GP9, you can hit really hard. The 900, you can hit really hard. These are facts of life in, in, in the physical world. Yeah. And because this is modeled very exactly, it's the same. You, it's not a free lunch. You got you to gotta pay respect to the gear. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, but it's fun. Um, like, you know, right. you see me like crushing the vocal with a tape machine, with a cassette like thing. And that gives a cool vibe, you know? And you dig mm -hmm. it or you don't, but you have that option to to choose your colors and everything. Um, totally. It's really nice. Any questions so far that I have not addressed? Uh, I think we've kind of hit most of them. People, we, we kind of already got through the guitar, uh, you know, what it was tracked on. And of mm -hmm. course, you know, like we mentioned, you can, there's a whole start to finish series over on Pure Mix where you guys can see how this was going. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeff in, in our private chat here was saying, uh, for anyone wondering what guitar he's using, he's using a uh, mid 2000s Gibson SG through a 60s Vibrolux and Vance's Princeton amp. Uh, so that, that's kind of the amp combo that's going on there. Um, and then the other thing I, I did see a little bit earlier up in the chat, uh, people are asking about being able to record through the ATR Luna extension. And that's, uh, that's one thing that's really important to know, is, you know similar to the Studer uh, or the Neve Summing, when you're tracking live inside of Luna and you're in ARM mode, uh, you know ARM is the accelerated real-time monitoring. That's what gives you the the low latency experience, being able to process through UAD plugins. However, Luna extensions, those are native processes. So what ARM is going to do is it automatically bypasses these. So if you're sending your vocal through a bus that's got the ATR on it, you go to record enable that that vocal track. Uh, it's actually going to autom Luna's going to automatically route around it, so that way you're not increasing any latency to what you're hearing on the headphones or the monitors. Uh, but the nice thing, I mean, this is very similar to like the real world workflow. You didn't you wouldn't record through everything through the tape and then have that be what you hear in your headphones. You want to be able to hear the sound as immediately as possible. Uh, but then when you go back to play the take, it automatically re reactivates all of the extensions and gives you the full sound. Also, if you really want to track through ATR, just track through the plugin, mm -hmm. because the plugin works great in the console or in Luna um, on the on the record inserts. Well, I mean, the ATR the ATR UAD plugin is one of those ones that isn't that much fun to track through since it's got the ten thousand samples of, of oh. latency. You know that is, uh, that tells me that I haven't done that. I probably used the eight hundred <laughs> instead. Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. Tracking okay. through the studio, tracking through the studio, you'll get a, a, a still get a good low latency experience. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the ATR is one that'll always kind of like make your head turn sideways a little bit. Okay, um, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, uh, I like to learn things. So um, at this point in our um, hang, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to um, introduce a treat. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, we have the great, uh, I have the great pleasure and honor to have a guest here uh, who came with toys, when one big, big. <laughs> one big toy. One big heavy toy. So I'd like to bring on, um, my friend and somebody I consider a mentor, uh, Chris Muth, uh, with us and his uh, fabulous ATR 102 machine. And then we're going to do some ABing and then we're going to learn about the machine. So, for those of you who don't know who Chris is, uh, you've heard Chris's work because Chris um, is one of the leading 
designers in, in, in the US and has been for many, many years. He was the uh, head tech at the head factory. He designed, custom designed the consoles at Sterling Sound, helped design the whole Sterling Sound thing, and also is the designer behind all the gear at Dangerous Music. So all the monitors, the Dangerous 2 bus, uh, the back CQ, the Dangerous compressor, the monitor ST, the D-Box, the D-Box Plus, um, the master, all that stuff, it all comes from Chris's mind. And I've learned so much from Chris, and I'm so excited to have him on camera and be able to share his knowledge with us. Uh, and I'm gonna ask him lots of questions. Uh, this, <laughs> this ATR-102 machine, which is this one right here, and I, I have a way to, um, to give you a, a close up, guys, um, which I should start now, right, Ben? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, this ATR 102 is how I discovered uh, ATR 102 is in the, in the 2000s when, the, um, when Chris was actually working here on this floor. Uh, I was mixing the Rick Margitza record, which is an amazing tenor player uh, who used to play with Miles, and, who's, and so I was mixing his record. And I asked Chris, say, hey, can I? Can I borrow you tape machines? Because I just want to know what it sounds like. So you do know? you want to be mm -hmm. permanently ruined? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we Your wheeled it down. Your wallet, you buy tape. Yes, and so, and so my first experience ever with an ATR tape machine was Chris's. And um, this tape, this particular ATR is a absolutely amazing, amazing machine. Yeah. Um, it, because Chris, you know, decked it out and Replace the head, and he's going to tell us all about that. Um, so, and I think it's great for you guys to understand what it takes to get one of these machines running. Um, let me see if this works. Does this work? Because like this is this is kind of part of the process that uh, by using the extension or the plugin, thankfully was removed from the process exactly. of like this work having to set it up and align you. it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's th this is like so. Chris is currently cleaning the heads with alcohol. Uh, and the capstans and everything. By the way, I mean, how, look at this thing, how insane it is. It's so awesome. Hey, Fab, your, uh, your phone's giving us a frozen image. Is oh, it... awesome. Let me restart. <laughs> I knew something would break somewhere. Somewhere. Um, it's, it's been going, it's been been going far too smoothly so far. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I just restarted it. It says it's yeah. happy. There we go. I'm starting, to, I'm starting to see the feed on mine. Controller, are you guys seeing it now? Yeah. Keeps freezing up on here too. Okay, let me try something else. It worked fine earlier, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no justice in the universe. Is your phone super duper hot right now? No, it's an average Apple broken hot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me uh, let me turn the Wi-Fi on. Yeah, this yeah. is important. It's worth it's worth a second of waiting. Exactly. Uh, Wi-Fi. Chris, you're getting Chris, you're getting lots of love in the chat, by the way. Oh people, no. People loving <laughs> loving the dangerous stuff, and uh, yeah, happy to see happy to see you, man. Well, thank you. It's awesome. Thank you so much for coming down. Um, this is and really thank you cool. for letting us borrow, borrow your baby. Oh, yes. <laughs> Fab called me up last week and said he wanted to do this, and absolutely. Yeah, man, this is awesome. Th this machine's quite interesting, actually. It's a, I, it's been out uh, at ATR Services mm -hmm. Company, uh, getting this platform put on, which is for my lathe. I, I cut records for a living now. Um, and so a record cutting machine needs to have a delay. It needs to have a preview signal sent to its computer so it can calculate the groove geometry. And uh, Michael Spitz, uh, bless yep. his heart, uh, came up with this uh, extra platform and a preview playback set, uh, setup. So this is actually an ATR-104. It's got four channels in it. And two of the channels are set up to give me a signal half a revolution before it's actually cut to the disc. And then the, the regular playback channel comes through and that goes through the console and goes to the cutter head. So uh, this machine, it hasn't been on for quite a while and uh, it's just been modified and last week I, a fab called me up and I said, oh gosh, I better get it working. So that's what I've been <laughs> doing. And uh, we got it working and brought it down here and um, have been pleasantly surprised with the UA plugin. Sounds amazing. It sounds so much like the machine that my jaw dropped. It hit the floor. The so super kudos to the UA guys who did the, um, who did the modeling on it. It's absolutely incredible. Well, we're yeah. about to experience that. So, um, so could, would you? A lot of people don't know how this stuff works. I remember freaking out when you showed me. Just uh, to, to put it in record and in 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 uh, input. How does that work? Okay. Well, this is the control panel uh, for the channels, and uh, I'm going to leave it at input because we're actually running through it right yeah. now. Uh, but it, it's really simple. You just yeah. you, you hit the one track you want to change, and we're going to arm a couple of channels. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we do a uh, 
when we print the mix and test it, I might put it back into repro so we can listen through the machine, yep. uh, through the, the, the record and playback process. That's but that's good. what this is. It's, it's just the transport panel. Okay. And so we have another treat. Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. uh, here, Chris, this is a reel of brand new <laughs> Scotch 250 stock tape. stock 3M. Yes. Which I haven't seen in about 20 years. Yep. And Erica scored it for us, I believe. Yep. And <laughs> so who, know, who, know, who knows what dungeon that thing was hiding in? Yeah, this yeah it's is... amazing. Well, it's, it's yeah, new old stock. It, I opened it so I could align the machine. But other than that, we haven't been using it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's really quite incredible because it, it brings back memories. Scotch 250 has a smell. It's kind of like, it smells like um, caramel. Or if you were cooking something with a lot of... Um, uh, with a lot of brown sugar in it, and you started to burn it. It's got this kind of burnt to burnt cinnamon toast smell to it. And to me, what it does is it brings back memories of when 250 was a really... Um, our stock tape, the normal tape we used to use at the Hit Factory was 456, and we would align it to 370 nanowebers, which is plus mm -hmm. 6 over 185. And 250 was used, the people who really loved 250 was Tom Dowd, uh, with Eric Clapton sessions, we used to align for 250, and uh, Toby Scott with Bruce Springsteen sessions he used to ask us, you know, not to use our house tape. He he, he said he wanted 250, so that that was just it, it. The smell of this tape to me brings back those uh, fond memories of those sessions. Um, lots of them at the Hit Factory in the mid '80s when I was the chief of maintenance. It there. does smell nice. It's it is it's an interesting <laughs> yeah, smell. It's, it's nice. It's it it smells better than a mouse for sure. Yeah. Um, well, well, it's just different. That's, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully someday, you know, can't promise it anytime soon, but hopefully sometime, sometime down the line we can get the smell emulations. Smell out plug. <laughs> the smell you later. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so the process, um, so uh, Chris, run, run us through the, 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 the process the way it was. So you would put the tape on, but then you would have to align and bias well, the record heads, right? Yeah, actually, the Here. tape machines start off with, with, a, with a test tape. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm using an MRL, uh, and basically a test tape is, is uh, made by some people at a laboratory uh, where they know exactly what the levels are. And that goes on the machine first, and you set it up so that it's reproducing properly. And once that happens, then you run tones into the machine, and you can align, you can set the bias, uh, which is how much of a high-frequency signal is going through the tape. And uh, that sets the way how stuff comes through it, how much distortion and top end and all that comes back or how little. You, what you want to do is you want to set the bias for the lowest distortion through the machine. That process takes about 20 or 30 minutes, so I don't really want to do that now, no. um, other than just to show you how it was done. Right. Um, I have a test oscillator. I brought my Neutrik with me. So we have the Neutrik right here. And mm -hmm. So the Neutrik is, is a test oscillator, and also you could use, use it as an analy analyzer, right? But here yeah, it's, it's just distortion gonna, analyzer you're play and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and basically what I did is I ran tones through it. This, these are the, the audio cards in the machine. So mm -hmm. what you're doing is you put your test tape on, you, you adjust your reproducer gain, your reproducer equalizers, and then mm -hmm. you put your, the tape you're going to record on, set the master bias level, and then the record levels and record equalization curves. And, and all of that stuff is quite boring. And what I used to do for, oh, 128 tracks on a session in four different, in each room. So... We used to get our 96 oh, tracks and stuff like that. We used to lock up anywhere to four tape machines at a time because people were crazy in the 80s. And um, that's just... Wow. That's, Dude, that, 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 people that people been, are no longer crazy an... at all. Yeah, yeah. people don't do Yeah, now people when... like to record to eight tracks or 16 <laughs> tracks or something like that. But That must, that must have been a, a real... That must have been a long day at the office, putting all that together. It was, it was a lot of work, and it was my responsibility at the time to uh, train the crews on how to deal with this stuff. And uh, we mm -hmm. had about six or eight maintenance engineers at any given time on staff at the hit factory, uh, basically one person per room uh, yeah. in, in two different shifts. And that's, that's what we did for a living. Most of what we did was get out our tweakers and spin knobs and lots and lots of knobs i calculated it out it was like it was 10 24 knobs on a 48 track section thousand knobs oh, in about an hour you had an hour to set up the two machines if it, if the session was dolby it was much worse then you would have uh, 
<laughs> Double that, right? It, it's just, yeah. Un- I'm thinking back on it now. It, does, it makes me want to drink. Where's that champagne? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the fridge. Well, Actually, I remember the, the poem was, I'd rather have half a, bo- half a full bottle in front of me than a full frontal lobotomy. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, um, so it's important to realize for people who haven't used this, and it hit me the first time I used this, is like when you mix and you, go, you know you're going to print through an ATR or through a tape machine, you don't know what it sounds like until you actually record to it because mm-hmm. you cannot hear, it's not like with the plugin, with the hardware, you cannot hear the sound of the tape until you actually record and listen back. Yeah. Right? It's got to be mm-hmm. running. But you can't be doing that all day because you'd be killing the tape, you'll be killing the machine. So yeah. you have to test. And I remember my first experience when Chris first showed me this, I was like, what? Like, right. you mix and then you record it and you listen back and you're like, oh, Oh, mm. oh, oh, I hear now. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. uh, and I was like, oh, but I got to adjust this and adjust that. So it's yeah. really great to be the, the plugin. Part of what the plugin does for you is you can actually monitor through your whole process while listening to it. And that is amazing uh, because mm-hmm. as you'll see, what we're going to do is we're going to play the song and we're going to record it back into Luna. So check this out. The whole session going through yep. my mix bus. The mix bus goes out to, the, to Chris's machine. Mm-hmm. Chris is going to hit record. The output of that machine is getting back into Luna. Cool? So yep. I will be able to compare. Once we recorded the, the, the thing, I will be able to compare inside the, the Luna plugin uh, uh, versus Chris's machine. And to do so, obviously, I have to turn off my <laughs> yeah. emulation on my mix bus, right? I was going so, to say, make sure, make sure we turn it. We don't want to double stack the, uh, the effect. We don't. Actually, it may yeah. be interesting, but for now, that's not the point of this demonstration. So I'm going to mm-hmm. go to the top of the song, and um, I put the track, the tape return track in record, yep. and I have muted or bypassed the ATR 102 that's on my master tape. Gotcha. Cool? Are we clear? Yep. Okay. So the so in so what you're saying though, uh, way that we've got this routed up right now, we're going to be able to feed into the tape machine, pass through the tape, and then take back off the repro head, and then that's what's getting recorded here. Voila. Yeah. That's the deal, uh, which allows us to have the best apples to apples comparison. Um, mm-hmm. uh, of course, there's an A to D and a D to A. Yeah. You know, but we've but been listening through that loop the entire time since the so beginning. Yeah, nothing's yeah, changing. We've yet. been listening through that loop so that uh, things won't change that much. In other words, we, we want to just compare. Just the we tape. want to do uh, comparisons and, and basically the A to D and D to A uh, disappear because we've been listening to it all the time since the beginning. That was the yep. idea of the setup. All right. Awesome. Uh, do you have any questions uh, or from the from the good people over there uh, before we record this? We got uh, just a lot of people are, are really, you know, just noticing how, like, you know, this generation, we we never, we've never gotten to smell or touch or really be hands on with these types of machines. Like, only knowing the emulations, it's you know, it's fascinating to know just how much work went into using the real things, and that's that's part of the process that you know, thankfully, is is much easier nowadays. Um, but while you know, what we're going to demonstrate here, hopefully, is that you know, sonically. We're we're getting the results that we, that you want without any of the uh, tweaking yeah. or having and, and, to have a Chris Muth in the room. Yeah, the tape whisperer. You have to have a tape whisperer with you. Um, yeah. So the thing is, uh, last night when when you know we brought the machine in. Uh, by the way, it's heavy as hell. Um, we <laughs> yeah, two two piano movers. Two piano movers to move it. Um, oh, man. Uh, Chris aligned, uh, bias the tape and used his noise trick and run eight hundred hertz and then. Uh, 10k and then 20k and, 20K. and uh, 500 125 and 60 and 30. <laughs> so we we thought that you know it that's a bit of a you know watching paint dry but that has to be done before you use the tape if you want to see that process you can again on pure mix there's chris mara uh, mm-hmm. shows how he aligns his uh, mci machines it's the same process um, so if you're curious about that, you should go check that out uh, nice. but so we we spared you the the 10 <laughs> 15 minutes of no Aligning sound and just Chris going. Oh yeah, no. beep. yeah. Beep, beep. Uh, Maintenance mating call. So yeah, that's exactly. it. <laughs> uh, so we got a couple questions. Uh, yeah. What? So what speed are we going to be running the uh, the machine at? We're running at thirty ips. Thirty ips. Our reference level is uh, one eighty one eighty five nanowebers per meter, and we're hitting the tape about two dB hot. So the resultant reference level is two fifty nanowebers per meter. Because you asked. Nice. Um, yeah. So um, only because then, you asked. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then the other the other big question: uh, How much does a machine like this go for these days? 
Uh, I believe that you can order an ATR somewhere around the eight to ten thousand dollar range, uh, rebuilt by um, the ATR service company. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Right. Yeah. So you can get get one for you know ten thousand, or you know have the extension. That's if you supply and... them the machine. You can buy a used machine, you know, a couple thousand bucks for a clapped out machine. Send it to them, maybe about six or eight thousand bucks to bring it up to. Depending on what needs to happen, but it's yeah. uh, you know typically if you're going to spend that kind of it's money, you grand. want them to just yeah yeah do it's the deal. and 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 wait a, a real a tape couple of months is, few months yeah so. in a few months um, mm -hmm. a real tape running at fifty ips at uh, fifteen ips or say it's thirty ips mm -hmm. uh, a real tape is that's fifteen minutes it's fifteen minutes worth of time and it yep. costs right now somewhere like two hundred bucks think about that if you think hard yeah. drives are expensive rethink. Um, <laughs> totally. Yeah, real. You could record two full recording sessions for the same co on hard drives for the same cost as one reel of tape for fifteen minutes in stereo. Yeah, it's pretty silly. So it's it's a it's definitely um, uh, it's a thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's see how far how close we can get. You about All ready? All right, let's do it. So is, Chris, Chris is going for. in to record, and mm -hmm. the tape is running. And I'm gonna we're gonna get a little delay now. Yeah, so, uh, there's going to be a little bit, oh, because there's a delay on top of it, because it takes time for the tape to go through, so the, the playback has a delay. Uh, gotcha. But that's okay, because we're not, you know, we're not tracking through it. And my, my plugin is off, the machine is running, and we're mm -hmm. going to listen to, we're going to record the whole thing. Let's just listen to some music for a moment, stop geeking out. Awesome. Amen. Dude, <laughs> so, sounds sounds amazing. People are just so good. blown away with how good, how good that sounds, and, uh, and in all regards, not just the tape aspect, but also the, that guitar, the vocoder stuff. Like this is yeah, this is great. really special. Those guys are absolutely awesome. So now, uh, let's talk about the setup. Hi. Uh, so 
Now I have here, uh, I labeled it ATR. You can see on my screen. I don't know what you're seeing, by the way. I, um, I'm just like talking to a, a We have a couple right different now. cameras going here. Yeah, there's so much stuff going <laughs> yeah. on right now. You there's have so no much, idea. So, so, well, the, right, now, right now they're seeing you and me on, on the camera. Okay. Uh, and then we'll pull up, we'll, we can pull up the Luna session here. Yeah, so I think that would be the most ed educational. So, um, so you have, okay. um, so now I'm going to turn my, my ATR, the, the, my, the one I own, the 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 my AT, it's my my precious your ATR virtually yeah. precious. Fab's, virtually <laughs> fabs ATR exactly yeah, exactly uh, and so so if if you know the concept of input monitoring which is a concept taken from tape machines right input monitoring is mm -hmm. when you listen to what's coming into the track the no not latency. what's on the tape you know so there's no latency yep. because there was latency in tape machines by the way you know the the latency was that it takes time for the tape to go through the record head and then to the playback head. And so that gap makes a delay. And, um, mm -hmm. and so that's the original latency. Uh, and gotcha. You can't change that buffer. Um, so, yeah, there's um, no, no moving the heads around. So if you're on input, call it on input, meaning you're listening before the tape, so there's no latency because you're listening to just electronics, not, not yep. magnetics. Um, and so what, I'm, what I did here, our setup that we did yesterday when we prepped this, is when my track, I'm going to take it off record, when my track is on input, I'm listening to what the mixer is feeding it, which is at this point right now, I'm listening to my whole mix that you just heard, mm -hmm. but with my ATR 102 on it. Clear? Yep. So now the so now the machine is out of the out of the loop. The tape machine is now resting. Yep. After a well it done. Did, job. It, did, it did its hard work, and this this will allow us to A B between the the emulation and what we just listened to recorded off the machine. Exactly. We'll be able to go back and forth between the two without any uh, any delay. Exactly. And then when I remove the input monitoring. I'm not listening to what's on the tape return, and that's the ATR we just recorded. Are we clear? So when it's yep. off, when the input monitoring is off, then uh, I'm listening to the tape, the Chris's ATR, and when the input monitoring is on, I'm listening to the Luna extension. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do is, uh, before we play it back, um, we are going to um, do a blind test. Hey, um, we're gonna we're gonna we so, gotta make we gotta make it a little you know we we'll come back and we'll we'll see it later but I think yeah, yeah. let's let's let's, let's, let's make do a blind it test. let's let's do a blind test mm -hmm. uh, right. and um, yeah. yes so <laughs> there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a, a a black screen at one point um, mm -hmm. we'll replace and your so, eyeballs later yes exactly yep uh, so now, yeah right now we took we took the screen away it's just you and me on camera so we can we can get people ready for for this experience okay so um, but. Because I know you people, um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first listen to a few bars of the raw mix as a pilot cleanser. So what I just did is I muted all the tapes out. Okay? okay? Yep. So we're back, down, we're back down to raw tracks raw from tracks. Vance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we'll do the A-B test. Okay. And I promise I will not cheat. <laughs> Promise. I'll keep him honest, guys. And I can I see have, the screen. I have Chris watching me. <laughs> oh, so I no, can't I'm not going to keep you honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, All right, so here's... Do we have, the, do we have the, the black screen up? Uh, for the palette cleanser, we're still on the cameras. Okay, so let's do, let's do palette cleanser. So mm -hmm. listen to this beautiful, amazing tracking work by Vance Powell. Okay, you've been cleansed. Um, so now, my friends. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's go. Let's let's cut to cut to black. We're we're gonna take our beautiful face, our distracting faces away. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're gonna do. We'll do the actual A B. No cheating. Uh, Fab's gonna randomize whether we're in or we're out. It's randomized already. Mm -hmm. You can hear the click. Hold on. Can you hear the click? There you go. There we go. Yep. And so they can't see the screen, right? No, nope, they're just seeing they're just seeing black right now. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm gonna play like four bars. You know, try and memorize the sound, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll stop, and then 
So I'm going to say A, play four bars. Then I'm going to say B and play four bars. Cool. Fair? Sounds fair. Let me know when it's good. Go for it. A. B. Master plan. I bear again. My own worst enemy is my head. One more time. A. Now what? <laughs> All right, so let's, everyone in the chat, let's, uh, yeah, I see some people already commenting here trying to guess which one is which. Uh, so, yeah, keep on, everyone in the chat right now, blast which one you think is uh, is analog or which one you prefer. Uh, does, you know, you can, you can go by preference or you can try to call out which one's the machine, which one's oh, the yeah, extension. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right, we're see seeing a seeing a bunch a bunch of count. All right, here we go. I'll start reading them out. So we got B B is analog. B is analog. B sounds better. A is analog. B is better. A is analog. Massive bass boost on B. Both sound amazing. A is tape. B has so much bass. A is muffled. B is the plugin. A is the plugin. <laughs> B is the extension? Question mark. B <laughs> does feel good, but uh, B is more clear, B less high end, B has more body, B is tape, B machine, B is Luna, B sounds best to me, B sounds tape, A is real tape, A is plug in, A is more, oh wow, yeah, it's yeah, really so, fascinating. I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, yeah, prefer A, uh, B is analog, B is plug in, A is tape, B is tape, B is Luna, uh, well, I'd say the consensus is that <laughs> there is no consensus here, this is amazing, B is amazing, A was tape, I think, A is analog, B is... B is digital, B is tape, B is analog, B is machine. I prefer B. B is, A is better. Both sound great. A is more clear. B has more body. I think uh, I prefer B, so I'm going to get ready to throw my machine out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so close. So close. Does it matter? Question mark. B is kind of bass boosted. That is the uh, right question. That is the right question. That Back up. The, <laughs> congratulations. Is it so it's so close. Does it really matter, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is that is the thing. I mean, of course it matters. It's very important that it matters. Mm -hmm. We got to be it got to be very real about this. And I want to say something very important. Um, so when we set out to do this, um, and when when UA called me and said, "Hey, you know, do you think that would be fun?" I'm like, "Oh yeah." Um, and I said, "You know, I know who I'm going to call. I'm going to call Chris Muth mm -hmm. and I want him to bring his ATR because it's the best sounding ATR and tape machine I've ever heard. It is the best sounding tape machine I've ever heard. It's amazing how tweaked out it is and how beautiful yeah. it sounds. And I'm like, are you guys ready? You guys, UA, are you ready for <laughs> yep. me to go on camera in front of all these people uh, and truly a being the machine versus the plugin? And what do we do if the machine crushes the plugin? Like, mm -hmm. you know, and they were like, well, we got we. This is real. The truth. We'll have more. Yeah, this, this is what we want. Yeah. Yeah. No fear. Um, and so, um, and so, I found that really awesome. And so I said, okay, fine, I'm in. And that's why we're doing mm -hmm. this. And so the point of that the gentleman in the or lady in the chat said is like, they both sound great. Does it matter? Um, it's a very good point um, because uh, I personally, unless. Chris is nice enough to let me borrow or rent his machine from him. Uh, I don't have an ATR here, you know, but mm -hmm. I love the way it sounds. And if you AB fast enough, you can lose yourself as to which one is which, which I did a couple times before. And now if you yeah. latch on, if you latch on to the difference like by learning it, then, then you can make them apart, right? Just like mm -hmm. you could take two hardware ATR machine apart. Because this yeah. one sounds different from the next one, which sounds different from the next one. And if we exactly. A-B between the two machines, we could do the exact same exercise and I venture to say with the same amount of difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, for all intents and purposes, uh, in this particular taste, um, <laughs> A 
is the Luna extension and B is Chris's ATR. Yes. Okay, I'm keeping my machine. You keep keeping your machine. I'm really, really your machine. surprised at how good the modeling is. It's absolutely, it's just amazing. And of course, and of the, course the differences the difference. can be just a little bit of adjustment. And and the nice thing about the the, the Luna a version is that you can adjust all that stuff. And so that's there's more variation between picking different tapes than whether or not it's virtually the tape machine or the real well, one, which is, which is really stuff. amazing. That's the, that's the, great the job, key, guys. The, uh, Thank you. From Chris Mute. The thing that went, floored me Amazing. doing this, because as I said at the very beginning, is like, I find this really fascinating. It's not something I'm going to do every day, right? Uh, it takes time, it takes resources, it takes energy, and it takes the will to do it. So um, I'm grateful for UA to organize this. We have this memory of things, that, and our memory is um, uh, famously unreliable. Um, mm -hmm. Even the best memories, especially audio memories, except for a few people like Chris who has an amazing oral memory. George Massenberg also is pretty impressive. Like he can remember things exactly. They can remember things from way, way back. I've been practicing mine, but I know that what this proved to me last night, I was like, wow, this, these, the extension and the machine are cut from the same DNA. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're siblings. And that means that if you want that DNA on your, on your uh, music, then the plugin the, in the, the plugin and the extension, so I keep calling the plugin the extension, gets you there, which is why half the people thought A was uh, the tape machine and half the people thought A was the, uh, the tape, the, mm -hmm. the extension. And that's the thing that's amazing about these things is that it puts that stuff in, in, in perspective. From my prof professional uh, point of view, this has educated me to the fact that, yeah, this shit sounds it's good. It's pretty darn you know? close. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. You can <laughs> yeah. get you can get lost very easily, which yeah. I didn't expect. I expected, oh geez, you know, the tape machine's gonna kill the plug in, but actually I'm really pleasantly surprised or you know pleasant not even pleasantly surprised. It's just really remarkable how, how good the modeling is. And um, I'm not mm -hmm. going to ask you guys how you did it right now, but the next time I'm out in California, I'm definitely gonna definitely gonna hit you up for some stuff. So, yeah. so, so I think that this is pretty awesome. Uh, I hope I hope people are really in, uh, yeah. appreciating th this because that's the kind of knowledge base. I'm I'm lucky. I know that because I moved into this building by complete chance in the 2000s, and Chris was up here, uh, and I learned a lot from Chris. This used so to be my house. this used to be his house, <laughs> uh, and this used to be Dangerous Music ago, Studios. Yeah. yeah, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I was able to hang out with Chris and get all this information firsthand and do that AB and get my ass kicked because my stuff was not good enough. So, um, so that's how you learn. And this kinds of really vetted, we were really precise about aligning the machine, making sure everything is aligned perfectly, that the, the converters are perfect, the clocking is great. Like we went crazy and it's really precious to be able to see that. And I hope you guys, you know, enjoy it. And um, yeah. I think well, that, It'd be great. Uh, now that we now that we've disclosed which one's which, can yes. we do you mind? Can we do it one more time uh, with the screen on, on and, yeah. and and that, this way we can actually go in real time without pausing between the two. Absolutely, uh, we can go between in and out, so you guys can really. Uh, again, we just want to show, you know, yeah, there's there's subtle differences between these two, uh, but as Fab's saying, as a lot of you guys have noticed here in the chat, like. There, it's in the same world, and you know. Of course, if you you know, the minute you change out the tape and realign the tape machine, you've you've already changed the sound of the machine. Yeah. So or as you your know, heads Fab were, the machines don't sound the same while you're using them. As they right? as the heads age, they get duller, and and stuff like that. So yeah, it's there's so many variables. It's really a great great success for for the team for Dave and Will and the team who put this together. It's pretty pretty impressive. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the, the verse. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I'm going to play a verse and a chorus because I love that chorus and when the bass comes on, it's so fat. Um, yeah. And I'm going to play two bars of each, right? Uh, and I'm going to cool. alternate and not speak. Uh, as a reminder, when the little eye here is on, we're listening to Luna. And mm -hmm. uh, when, the, when it's gray, dark gray, we're listening to Chris's ATR one, soup top, ATR 102. You all ready? Awesome. Let's do it. Here we go. Start with Luna. Yes. 
on the chorus, I actually like the Luna extension better. Mm -hmm. because I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, the 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 we pushed a little hard. I pushed a little hard. I may not have gained staged fully metrosexually on this one. Uh, and so uh, so it, it we're hitting um, the the hardware a little too hard. Uh, in this case, what I would do, I would mix, I would listen to a first pass on the tape. I was like, ah, oh, I'm hitting it too hard. So I would back up my mix bus a little bit and do another pass. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would do. Uh, but for, we had everything aligned perfect, so I didn't want to change anything. Um, yeah. So that's pretty awesome, right? What's what's the feedback, Dan? Dude, uh, people are like, 99% less work for 99% of the sound. You can't beat that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, and, I, and I'm not even sure that it's 99%, um, just 99% of the of the sound. It is really crazy accurate. If I, in that little bl uh, bass bloom that mm -hmm. we hear um, uh, on the tape, uh, I can create uh, in the Luna extension by just playing with the EQ at the bottom. Uh, yeah. So it really is like... It's, uh, but I wanted to keep it stock, 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 so that nobody complains that we try and rig this stuff, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. But I can make this sound like that. Uh, actually, Chris will probably do that in eight seconds flat because he knows this thing well, so well. Well, eight minutes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you have to realign the whole thing. So, um, so, so that's it. That's, that's, that's what we wanted to do. Um, I believe we have a couple guests we'd like to bring on. Yeah, let me. Uh, we've got we've got some we brought some special guests here. Awesome. Uh, who may know a thing or two about what we're talking about? Let's see. Uh, let's see, let me switch my screen around. So now, so Fab, now we're seeing you on uh, on your webcam. On oh, my webcam. My webcam. Yep. And Vance and Jeff, you guys hearing me? Oh, Vance. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my God. Said, Hey, Chris, I've got something for you here. Check this out. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> and, and not only that, just to make it even better, it's a sealed pancake. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have a case mm -hmm. of that. What? So, uh, yeah, 1984 sealed case. That was so my first year at the hip factory, so that's uh, yeah, as long as I've been crazy? a real recording engineer. Yeah, and then and then I also have some uh, here from. Uh, let me find the tag here. Oh, I can look on the inside. Is, is two fifty uh, your favorite too? This is two? the this is the uh, you know standard. Yeah, that's what and we that's got. Sealed. That's sealed also. So yeah, uh, the one we got was sealed yesterday. Is that is a uh, is two fifty your favorite also? 250 is my absolute favorite tape. I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna oh this is from 85. Uh no from it's a little later now. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out just for you guys. Mm -hmm. When um they were modeling the A uh 800, um I I I told Will I said Will you absolutely positively have to get a reel of 250 because. 250 was my it was my favorite tape. I've got to get a reel. You've got to get a reel of 250, and so they did. And while they were modeling it, they were like, "Oh my god, this stuff is really great." So the cool part is, is that they also then got a couple reels of half inch for the ATR. And so the 250 made it to the 800, and the 250 made it to the ATR. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very happy it did. Fantastic. You know? yeah. 250 so, is my is, favorite because of Chris. You know, um, I used to love that tape. I, that it was a a mainstay on many, many hit records in the eighties. You know, and of course, uh, and and obviously, uh, Chris knows why two hundred and fifty was stopped being made. It was extremely because. expensive and uh, also not uh, ecologically sound. That's exactly right. Uh, it had benzene in it. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> it's it's actually benzene. The amount of benzene in it doesn't matter. What happens is when the benzene goes into a landfill. Uh, it leaches into the water table, mm. and so that's really uh, bad. Yeah, but that's kind of, and that's kind of one of those weird like. Things but that, that formulation, make... actually, I'm looking at this uh, this almost 40 year old reel of tape, and it's not yeah. shedding. Mm -hmm. No, nope. not shedding. You know what I mean? It does like the, not. The guys, it does the rollers not shed. are all clean. Yep. Mm. Especially it's nice. if it's sealed. Especially if it's sealed, it will not shed. I have never. Uh, it is a Canada sticky shed, but. I'd never seen a new reel do it. Mm -hmm. um, I um, years ago uh, had a Google search for new old stock, you know, 250, and 
and I bought some. I I don't use. I have an ATR 104 also, Chris, um, uh, with the with the new the uh, flex magnetic heads. Yeah, that's and a piece that. of flex heads it's on it. It's an ATR. Yeah. Do you have this? Sorry, guys, we're gonna get nerdy. Do you have the pad nets? <laughs> the pad net card. I, I'm using the four speed pad nets. Yeah, um, I have the four speed. But I also have the two speed uh, that Mike did for me. Uh, right before he passed, which is, you know, crushing. I'd like me, the but... two speed. The two speed pad nets actually have an edge on the sound. Uh, they're a slightly simpler path. Um, yeah. However, for this demonstration, I wanted the four speed pad nets so that we could set up a bunch of different alignments. Mm -hmm. Right. And be able to switch back and right. forth in case. And that's... see, I'm a big, I never do 30. I always do 15. Ah. But, he likes but 30. like you. I, I, I like 15. <laughs> I'm a 30 yeah. nerd because distortion, you know, I, I like the slightly Absolutely. less intermodulation distortion, yeah, but I the flux heads uh, reach way down to 20 hertz at 30. So I think that gives you the best of both worlds. But um, uh, that is cool. I, I should set mine up for that. No, I don't um, know. It's, yeah, don't do change know. what you do, Vance. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> unless you I want do, to. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do zero at 250. So so zero over 250. So plus three, 185. Nice. So, yeah, that's that's great. I, lo I, like I love being. I like I love the language they speak. It's I was nice. like, I, I love being caught between the the level yeah. of nerd that's going on here. This is uh, uh, I, this is when magic. I saw your two gray machine beards. There, I, I, yeah, when I saw your machine, I thought, man, is that in a two? Is that in like an eight hundred case? But obviously, it's not. It's in a it's in a custom rack, which yeah. is pretty great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's in a cheap MDF rack, um, yeah. basically because it has to fit in my mastering room, and there just wasn't enough space for the right. original case. I really, I really love it. I love the preview head thing. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's great. Hey, if you yeah. want to cut analog records, AAA. Give Absolutely, me a dial. man. Absolutely. Right. AAA. I love AAA. So. Well, we have, uh, uh, we have Jeff and Jake. I was just, yeah, I was right just about here. to say we've we've got we've got some silent partners down here. Yeah. And then was, Sorry about was, that. Sorry guys, we got we got a nerd. We nerd got fan. nerdy on here. <laughs> I, was, I wanted I wanted to chime in and give our expertise, but I figured I'd let the amateurs, you know, have yeah. the well, say. Thanks, thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Very Trying nice. To be humble. So nice to see you guys. Thanks yeah. so much for letting us use your music. Oh my gosh, of course. Thank you all for having us on here. We're we're in Louisa, Virginia right now, which is outside of in between Richmond and Charlottesville mm -hmm. uh, on a little lake. And we just watched the whole thing. It, it was so cool. That was that was really a blast. And we wrote this tune. We did it for Pure Mix um, with Fab. And uh, Vance called us up beforehand. He was like, hey, you know, I want to do this Pure Mix session with you guys get some ideas flowing and so we got together with our friend danny and we were like hey man like we're gonna do some stuff with vance we want to cut some demos let's do it to tape it'll be really fun we grew up in the digital world like you just got this cool new tape machine let's do it and the tape machine what type of tape machine it's is a it tascam ms16 uh-huh first time i'd ever used it <laughs> so first time and yep. just some tracks were just going out and i was like hey guys we can't record for a little while i'm gonna be working on the tape machine for like the next 30 minutes. So, and that's when Sweet Beast, that's when they actually wrote that riff. The song that we just worked on. So we had 30 minutes to kill and we just started messing around and then the song was born. Uh huh. That's awesome. We were, that's awesome. We were wondering if your plugin has a, uh, like a stuff gets screwed up. Setting. A broken knob? <laughs> a broken knob? Yeah. Like a, take a 30 minute break. Died. Yeah, you can, you can rely on the Mac OS for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just upgrade to Catalina. You, that's that's yeah. how you'll get the uh, your yeah. mandated break. Ouch! Ouch! <laughs> if I ask you permission to Same. launch your uh, yeah. yeah yeah so this is this is awesome, guys. Thanks so much for um, again for letting us use mm -hmm. this. I loved. I mean, Vance, the uh, tracking, it, awesome, insane, so good, dude. Thanks. Crush it. I, it would not sound like this um, without you know. I had fun balancing it and putting just playing with the tapes it's a perfect demonstration for what tape can do it's mm -hmm. awesome awesome well i'd love well, to it's uh, funny when, well i'm sorry when you guys were playing it back and did the a and b test mm -hmm. uh i had it up on my monitors here and i and it was funny because you're talking about having a memory uh you went a i was like cool that sounds great cool b i go cool that's a machine that's a tape machine <laughs> yeah. and i just knew it immediately because you know that's the thing that i know what it sounds like yeah but i will say that the extension sounds really great and uh all of the emulations the 250 the 800 all of them sound great so mm -hmm. you know yeah. you know me i'm a ua fan so it's yeah, yeah it's Perk. very very subtle i was completely blown away at how subtle the, the differences are not like 
this one's the digital emulation, this one's the machine. It yeah. sounds like two different machines to me. Mm -hmm. And I, we, we used to take care, I used to take care of a lot of these things. Um, and that's, they were all different. And yeah. sometimes a client would come in and, and Tom doubted, I want the machine that's an A1 and oh God. So you'd go downstairs and <laughs> grab that upstairs. one. And that kind of stuff happened. But it, it, my, my point is, is that the emulation doesn't sound like it's a digital thing versus the original. It sounds like it's right. just a different machine. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So that is really quite amazing. Yeah. Uh, you so know, the one thing, the one thing I always wonder about this when we're putting an analog machine and people are like, oh, that sounds so much better or whatever. The, the one the one question I have is, could it be the minute, imperceptible timing and speed, you know, changes that happen in the tape path? Are, are those something that 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 somehow metaphysically, whatever you want to get down into weird stuff, um, you know, does that relay back to us? You know what I mean? It's it's always interesting to me uh, that thing with tape and what it, what it does and how it works. Can we just well, make we should a do preset this with cutter heads? Again? Again? Can we just make a preset that does that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, well it, you can you can turn the wild flutter up. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. You it, just yank the clock and pull it in and out while you're yeah, tracking. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> oh, that'll be great. That would work awesome. All right, yeah. guys. Um, well, I was gonna I, I was just, gonna I wanted to ask uh, real quick, Jeff and Jake. You guys were listening along as well, right? Yes, we were. We were. Yeah. What, what what was your impression between uh, between A and B? Um, well, we listened to the whole thing. We just put our iPhone in like a glass uh, cup and mm -hmm. just listened to the whole session, <laughs> just like that. And we professional really monitoring. That seemed great. Yeah, it seemed incredible. <laughs> That's what Fab told us to do when we listen to mixes now. Um, <laughs> No, uh, yeah. we actually are listening on some HS8s, a pair of just Yamaha monitors. And um, I thought, so we closed our eyes at the end for the mix bus bit. And we both said A was the plugin and B was the actual machine. Mm -hmm. But similar to the point that you brought up, Fab, you know, one wasn't, I, and that was just, you know, we're total noobs. We were just kind of like, I think B was maybe the machine you know, they both sounded great. And for us and what we're doing as artists, I mean, I could never, you know, I'm watching Chris explain everything. And I'm just blown away. And I'm like, <laughs> my brain can't even wrap my head around that. So for me as an artist to have a, a, a plugin or something that I can literally just start turning knobs until I say, man, that's the sound that I want. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, well, it's, like, a, it's a lot easier a lot easier to do that in digital than it is in analog let me tell absolutely. you absolutely right yeah, yeah. The that's on analog suck I never <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's 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 pretty um uh this was this has been great first i get to hang out with chris it's been a lot of fun thank you yeah, yeah. For inviting me. thank you guys and then, uh, and then i get to Thanks. see you guys again and i get to uh, i get to uh actually put uh, a a um vetted experience on my impressions you know mm -hmm. you have this thing in your head and it's nice to be able to see it in real life mm -hmm. um yeah. so i love that um Fantastic. all right well I'm, I'm going to print both actually i'm going to i'm going to print also the uh because i only printed the tape well um, i want to cut this on a record who wants a ref oh yeah because <laughs> yeah. chris chris cuts lacquer uh he has a crazy oh, yeah. neumann lathe with a it's an amazing lathe so it's a it's so, one of those uh, things that we'll have to model that and we'll figure out how to do that one a right. little later maybe next year <laughs> yeah that would be pretty nice um so yeah we should um, we should do you should cut a side with that because it's such a beautiful song awesome yes. um well, unless... i got it printed so it, yeah we have a, print of a it. single yeah. and send it to you vance great yeah that'd be great that'd be yeah. awesome i'd love that that'd be really that's that'd awesome. be really special it's coming right up just give me a few days okay that's awesome <laughs> very nice very nice. nice well uh guys fab chris vance jeff jake Everybody, thank you guys all so much for for putting this together. Uh, thank you to all to all you guys in the control room, Mason, Miles, uh, Matt, everybody, Drew on the chat. Like th this is a huge team effort to put on a broadcast like this and to be able to do ambitious stuff of actually comparing one with the other and uh, and have it be not just a, a you know, this is real life. This is this is actual as as close as us nerds can get to comparing these two things. And it's really great to hear how they how they stand up next to each other. 
Uh, we didn't know how it was going to come out. No, exactly. <laughs> also, a big, a big thank you to Erica for the crazy logistics behind yes. the scenes, logistics, and making everything super smooth. Absolutely. Uh, and and finding a, and getting us a tape of new old stock two fifty. Just I love time. the smell. It's a, it's bringing back <laughs> you know thirty five year old memories. It's unbelievable. Chris is getting high on tape over there. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Well, uh, and thank you everybody everybody that tuned in and uh, and helped out with the uh, you know all your opinions in there. That was it was really fun to see you guys uh, responding there in the chat. Uh, you know this is uh, super. This is why we do it. We we do this to to be able to share knowledge with you guys and uh, really enjoy. Put stuff like this together uh and yeah guys unless any any other parting words before uh before well, we sign off so much ben and uh tell all the guys at ua i really miss them i haven't been out to california in a little while and uh we'll try and get out there next summer and uh crash your party awesome can't wait yeah same here tell everybody hi and uh you know stay safe out there yep you as well Great. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, have a great rest of your day, and we'll be back uh, with some more live streams uh, next week, starting on Monday. Everybody have a great weekend. See you all later. Okay. Ciao. Ciao.